Hi and welcome to another episode of Rob's Triathlon Tips for Beginners. This will be a video about how I'm training for the next four months to get ready for Ironman Lake Placid. It's a follow-up video to one I did about my off-season training plan. So I'll be sharing my screen, showing a, a spreadsheet and walking through month by month. Okay, so this is my spreadsheet. I've got four tabs, one for each month, leading up to my race in July. Uh, so for April, which will be my first month, um, kind of call it on-season training. And we're easing back into things. I have coming off of a two-week uh, back injury. So if these numbers seem a little light, that's why I'm being cautious getting back into training and ramping up for the race so that's one thing to consider and another thing to consider is what i'm showing you is a training plan that is for people like me who are looking to finish an iron man not trying to win one not trying to qualify for a spot at the world championships or anything it's it's a plan for somebody that uh can only fit so much training into their week you know, like you're trying to balance your personal and your work life with your training. <laughs> so without further ado, I'll go through the months. Um, so April is pretty similar to my off season training plan. You can see here I've completed three days already. Um, getting back into swimming. I, I haven't been swimming much because of trying to avoid catching you know what. The latest variant of it so getting back into swimming by the end of the month swimming three quarters of an hour which will be about half of the ironman distance of 3.8 k so i'll finish i'll probably finish half of that in that amount of time so that's a pretty decent amount of swimming for me anyway uh, i'll only be swimming once a week because that's how much I care about swimming, not because I don't think swimming is important. <laughs> I know that uh, I'm in the next four months only going to get very marginal gains if I swim more than once a week. I might save a couple seconds per 100 meters and I'm not willing to put that much time into that. I would rather focus, based on what I learned last year, on getting stronger on the run. That was my weakness last year when I didn't Ironman on my own. Um, so yeah, swimming once a week to start cycling once a week, easing my way back into that from my injury up to doing a two hour ride. That's a mostly climbing in Zwift. I'll be doing yoga twice a week, which I really love for recovery and strengthening in, in different ways and, just general mobility. I'll be doing uh, interval training for it's about 35 minutes to do the the fartlek run that I do in Zwift. It's a Swedish term for speed play, I believe. Uh, and then Saturdays I'll be doing a whole body strength workout. And then Sundays I'll be doing my long steady runs, working my way up to an hour and a half. And on all of these spreadsheets up at the top, there's an orange box that have some of my main goals for that month. And like it says here, get more used to swimming and running without carbs. So back in February, after wearing a continuous glucose monitor for uh, about a month, I made the decision to, for my health, to switch to being, to eating a low carb diet. And so I've had to switch to using a, a product called S Fuels, which is to support low carb endurance sports. Uh, so using uh, fat as your primary energy source for endurance sports. So I'm building my body's ability to burn fat basically. And I've had a lot of success riding my bike without carbs, no problem, up to three hour bike ride. Uh, I haven't really done really long swims without taking in fuel beforehand. 
So I got to test that out. And running, I'm still hitting a bit of a wall about 50 minutes or so into a run that I've got to feel like I got to get better at breaking through it and, and really test myself um, going for two or three hour run eventually. Just, just knowing that that's okay for my body. So that's uh, April, uh, the gist of it anyway. Down the right side, you can see the number of hours per week, peaking at six and a quarter hours. And the numbers will go up in May. Okay, so this is my uh, plan for May. You can see up at the top, my main goals are to swim three kilometers. Um, work my way to doing a couple half marathons and do a five hour bike ride. You can see down the side that, you know, the numbers are higher than April. I'm peaking at 10 and a quarter hours approximately in the month of May for one week. And then I'm, you know, seven and a half hours a couple weeks. Uh, some things that are different are that I've got a full rest day thrown in there. At least one a month for May and June anyway. And then July kind of tapering, which you'll see. Um, I've got here highlighted yellow, a brick workout day, uh, which means doing two of the disciplines back to back. And the traditional brick is to do a bike, then a run. This will work out to be approximately an Olympic distance brick. So I'm going to try and bike 40 kilometers on a very flat course in Zwift and then run for an hour, which will be about 10 kilometers on the treadmill. Just to get that sensation again of running on tired legs and remind your body of, you know, it's going to feel funny to run for the first five minutes or something and that you can get through that pretty much it's good to practice that at least a couple times before a race so i'll be doing that in may you can see i'm working my way up this swimming on mondays up to an hour um and biking i've got uh still quite a few days that are just about two hours, a couple days of climbing in Zwift. I've also got a day here, May 21st, where I'm planning to do a five hour bike ride. And because I've taken this rest day, I've shifted my long run a couple days over to a Tuesday. I'm continuing with the speed runs, continuing with yoga, continuing with strength training, just numbers is kind of coming up. You can then mixing in a brick and, and making sure to take a full rest day. And as I increase the volume of workouts, I may be shifting these yoga workouts to be m more and more just recovery focused. It's more of a stretching type yoga. So that they're, they're almost like rest days. So that's May. Uh, roughly 34 hours of exercise uh, of course these weeks look silly like three hours and one and three quarters hours but there's actually other days that belong to other months on those weeks so that's why they look kind of goofy <laughs> so uh, here we have june which will be by far my biggest training month um some of the concepts behind this month are, again, to have a like a brick workout, to have a full rest day, and to follow a tapering plan. So the plan that I have is pretty basic. It's based on what I heard Mark Allen say on his YouTube channel. He's the six-time World Ironman champion, so he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> He said, for a full distance Ironman, uh, the average athlete should be tapering their run six weeks out from the race day, their bike five weeks out, and their swim four weeks out. 
and that means to start cutting back on the length of your workouts, the intensity of your workouts. So that's kind of programmed into my spreadsheet here. Six, week, six weeks out for me is going to be this week. And so that's why my longest run in my whole training plan, which is a three hour run, it's penciled in as three hours. I'm going to run 30 kilometers. Um, that's why that's in that week. That's why I have a seven and a half hour bike ride the following week and why I have a one and a half hour open water swim the week after that. So those will be the full distances. Those are my guesses of how long it will take me. If it takes longer, then so be it. I'm going to do the full distances. So this run I'm going to do on a treadmill because it's going to beat up my body. There's no sense in running a marathon to prepare for a marathon. There's also no sense in me running three hours outdoors because I'm in my 40s and that doesn't do great things to my body. And I might as well only do that to myself on race day. <laughs> a treadmill has cushioning built into it. So you, you should take advantage of that for your, for your long runs if you can. Um... The, the bike ride that I'm going to do, I'm going to subscribe to something called Full Gas. I think it's spelled with a Z on the end. It's similar to Zwift or Ruby. It's a virtual world that you can bike in. And they now have some Ironman courses, including the Ironman Lake Placid course. So that's what I'll be doing. It may take me less than seven and a half hours. I'm not sure, but that's going to be a great experience for me to experience the climbs the downhills just get a get my bearings for the course virtually and really test my nutrition out uh, and then this open water swim will give me just full confidence that i can do a swim in a lake no problem i can do the full distance i did it last year a couple times too so i know i can do it um, yeah, so this will be the first month that I'll be doing open water swimming because I live in Canada and that's June is the first month that I can start doing open water swimming where I live. There's a, a nice lake not too far from me. It's about a half an hour drive and uh, it's good for July or June and maybe the start of July and then it gets LJ and then I have to go swim somewhere else. <laughs> uh, June, what's also different about June is I'll be adding trail runs. So I'll be running three times a week. We're doing trail runs for an hour, running hills, building strength, uh, testing my stability, trying not to sprain my ankle. <laughs> still doing the speed runs and doing longer and longer steady runs. I'll still be doing a couple climbing focused Zwift workouts for that are two hours. I'll still be doing some yoga and I'll be doing both pool and open water swimming. So this is by far the most in, uh, intense month and I've got written up here, no more strength training. And uh, that's because I don't want to hurt my shoulder or something like that and kind of throw off all my training. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll already have built up a foundation of strength um, by June. So I don't see the point in continuing it up until the, the race at this point. It's just going to be more of an injury risk for me. And finally, we have July 2022. Goals for this month are to continue doing a smart job of, of tapering for the race. Uh, I've got the uh, last two weeks where I've said here, isolate, sort of don't go to a swimming pool. Just do stuff in my basement and in my own house, basically. <laughs> uh, cutting out speed runs. I don't want to risk like a stress injury in the last month leading up to the race. 
but uh, sticking with trail runs and long steady runs on a treadmill and lots of yoga still in the last month. So you can see the numbers are winding down here back to similar hours that I saw in, in April. It was sort of like an inverted April, basically. And my own preference is to not do a whole bunch of stuff. On race week, I just do yoga, you know, just to stay loose, mobile. Um, yeah, I don't really, really want to do what you see on professional triathletes channels where they're like, get there and they do a course recce and they're out on their bikes and they're out swimming in the lake and they're, they're getting in all these last minute workouts. Like at this point in the year, I'll have built my fitness. It's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to risk unnecessarily the possibility of injuring myself that last week and I want to be well rested for race day I want to get to Lake Placid I want to get acclimatized I want to get used to the time zone change from where I live which is uh, I believe three hours so I want to get rested and ready for race race day not just be stressed about fitting in workouts uh, and just hang out with my family who are there to support me. So uh, I've got here one open water swim in July just for 45 minutes and then I'm cutting swimming for two weeks because I just don't see the point in doing that until the race at that point. I don't want to, again, I don't want to strain my shoulder or shoulders specifically. I've tweaked a little bit in the past. So I want to, if I do hurt myself, then two weeks is probably enough for me to get over a minor shoulder injury from my experience anyway. I hope you found that video to be useful. And if you did, please give it a like, make sure you subscribe to my channel and share this video with anyone who may benefit from it. Thanks.